Hello, I hope you're having a great day. So it's warmed up in Iowa a little bit. Um, for those of you that are new to my channel, my name's Danae and I'm in zone five on an Iowa flower farm. And I had a comment that said, um, it was from Renee and she said she would like to hear my five favorite flowers. And so I sat down and I was like, oh, like Lysianthus and snapdragons and sunflowers and and then I remembered all the spring flowers and I was like oh geez picking five would be difficult for me to do so I thought what I would do today um, since spring is coming up a couple months away now I mean about what March April so probably two and a half months for me before my first flowers I thought I would go through my five favorite April and May flowers <laughs> <laughs> because I just can't pick they're all so pretty so around April 26 last year I picked my first cut flowers that I could sell to the public and those are kind of the flowers I'm going to be talking about um, so the tulips the tulips started blooming and I had not had tulips in the past and I realized that those tulips started my season off about a month earlier than I had my first year of flower farming. So I was so happy that I dove into the tulip realm and now I'm reading all these things about start forcing your tulips inside and getting an even earlier start. And I'm like, but what do you do in between? So I don't really know. I kind of like that date where they started. And then right after the tulips started popping, the daffodils started popping on the 28th. But because I had just planted the daffodils the year before for the first time, the stems were really short. So this year, I might have a lot more daffodils with longer stems. So that's pretty exciting. I did get some daffodils. I planted some of the specialty varieties that have like the peaches and the oranges and the ruffles and just the pretty daffodils. And there's also some just regular old yellow daffodils. And those are so pretty too. And then around May 5th, I think the red buds started blooming out here and I just love the red buds. So I did some videos with that. And I noticed around my house, the ground phlox and the hyacinth, which I didn't use a lot of hyacinth, but oh, it smells so good. And I wonder if it would last in a bouquet, I don't even know. But that stuff started blooming and around May 11th, the anemones started popping and I don't have a hoop house or anything so the anemones were very short stemmed and with the tall tulips I just didn't the anemones just weren't for me and I might try them again in the future I think they're gorgeous I thought they were beautiful they just didn't perform as well as I was hoping and it's probably because I didn't start them off like in a high tunnel or a low tunnel or something like that and maybe one of these years I will do that, but I didn't even order them this year. I did order ranunculus though, and I think I'm probably gonna have the same problem with them, but I did not have ranunculus last year. So I'm just going through my favorites from last year. I'm sure they're different from the year before because every year changes. Um, but then around the 12th, I had some bleeding heart pop. Oh, and they were pretty new plants and I only had three of them. I ordered another one for this year. I'm thinking I should just have rows of them because they are so cute in a bouquet. And I just wish I had more stems of it because it's just so pretty, especially with the tulips. So I really love those. So after the bleeding heart, I noticed some of my pink spire salvia started popping and that looked really pretty, but it was really short. It's just a shorter salvia, but it's such bright pink and it just added this like flare to the stuff. And I was adding it with the anemones and I had the tulips in the crest. And then, and then around the 13th, my allium started popping. And if you remember, I had planted a lot of allium. Um, I didn't plant any more this winter but maybe I should because, oh, it was just, it was so fun to go from the tulips and the crest and the ninami and the salvia to having these huge purple balls, you know? And I was like, oh, you know, what am I gonna put with them? And two days later, the lupins started blooming and oh my gosh, it's such beauty. Like just the allium and the lupin and then the daisies started popping. Um, 
I had Lily of the Valleys, I had Dame's Rocket, and that just made for some gorgeous bouquets. And then around the end of the month, around May 30th, the peonies started popping. And having the peonies, the lupine, the lupin, having the peonies, the lupin, the dame's rocket, the daisies, and I had actually kind of been selling out of my tulips this year. I might actually have tulips around that time. And I think like going into June, around June 1st was probably my favorite time of the whole season. But I don't know, because then I get so excited with the lysianthus and snapdragons and stuff, and the sunflowers that are to come later. But that, it's just, it's the beginning of spring. It's like the most gorgeous time. And now I have these like gorgeous flowers. And so I have to pick from all of those things that I listed for my favorites. And I think I'm gonna, when I very first started, so my first year of flower farming, going into flower farming, lavender was like my favorite. I like the scent. I like that you can make soaps out of it. You can do all these cool things with lavender. So I planted all this lavender, but I think my all-time favorite flower at this point is the peony <laughs> because it's so pretty. It You can cut it and it can last in a cooler forever, but they do take a long time to grow. Like this year is going to be, I think this is my second year of having like the peonies have gone through two winters. So next year is really the year that I should be cutting on them. I think year five is the year where I'll have a lot of stems if everything goes well and my plants survive and I don't cut too much off of them and all the things you need to know about peonies. But I'm gonna say my number one favorite flower, especially if I'm only comparing the April and May flowers is going to be the peony. And then, gosh, it's so difficult, guys. Like, <laughs> it's so difficult to choose. The tulips are so pretty and they come in such an array of different colors. Like there's fringe and there's singles and there's doubles and they're the very first flower to really kick off your season and get you going and get, making you realize, hey, I need to start making sales. I need to start pushing my flowers, you know, so. Tulips, tulips are right up there. I'm gonna put tulips at number two. Although it's hard, it's hard for me because the allium are such a statement. I mean, you've got the dinky ones, you've got the huge ones. You can make massive bouquets because the stems are so long on them and they just look so pretty, especially if you throw in a spike like lupin. Ah, oh, Lupin. I don't know. Does Lupin go second? Does Allium go second? Ugh. It's so, I don't know. That's really hard. So we're just going to say that my top five favorites are, and we're not going to put these in any order. We're going to say Peonies, Lupin, Allium, Tulips, and now I have all the others like daffodils and salvia and daisies. Really? Like I'll have to pick Lily of the Valley. It smells so cute. And like so many like grandmas and stuff started the kids off with those on their table smelling up the whole house. I mean, can you see why I couldn't do my top five for like the entire year? There's so many flowers. There's like zinnias and there's lysianthus and there's snapdragons and there's sunflowers and <sighs> there's asters and oh my gosh, there's all the pretty things. So let's see. I don't know because the dame's rocket is so nice because you can tuck it in with the allium and tuck it in with the lupin and it smells so good. It's so fragrant. But then the salvia is like this really pretty spike element. And oh, like the painted daisies, like the pinks, like the bright pinks with the yellow center against that purple lupin. <sighs> it's a really hard question to answer. 
I'm gonna have to say though, uh, I'm gonna have to pick the daisy. I don't know. The daisy is so pretty and it does add like that. If you have your allium and you have your lupin, it adds like that flower with the cute little petal look. So I'm gonna have to go with the daisy. So I guess my top five favorite flowers in 2023, this list may change next year, <laughs> are peonies, tulips, lupin, allium, and daisies. So that's it. It's really hard to decide those things, isn't it? And that takes you into June. So in June, you still have your lupin and you have your peonies and your snapdragons start popping. And then June, just kind of by the end of the month, you have a lot bigger list. So I think I'll wrap this video up with that so it's not too long and you can kind of get a feel for what my favorite April and May flowers are here in zone five. And I'll do another video on my favorites for maybe June and July. And then I'll see, like maybe those will be the same as August, September, October. I don't really know yet. Um, I'll go through all my pictures and I'll let you know what my favorites are. Oh, the little lupin are still nestled in. I checked them the other day. They look the exact same as last time I gave you an update. And I need to start walking around and figuring out. I got six David Austin Rose bare roots. So they need about four feet of space, like four feet of a circular space for each one. So I'm looking at a good 24 to 30 feet of roses, maybe just a row of roses, maybe plopping them in different places in the farm to see if they do well. Um, I have a couple redwood dogwood. Um, I have some winterberry holly and I have a Mr. Poppins because you have to have both the female and the male to get the nice little berries. <clears throat> and then I, I have some other things and I need to figure out where I'm going to put them all. Oh, maybe that will have to be another video. <laughs> but anyway, those are my top five favorite I guess spring, I mean technically going into June is spring as well, but those are my top five, top five favorite April and May flowers. I hope you enjoyed the video, I hope you enjoyed the little slideshow pictures while I was talking, and I hope you all have a great day. <laughs>